Good afternoon, everyone. How are you doing today? Good, sir. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Um, I'm seeing only 10 of us. I'm seeing only 10. <clears throat> I'm seeing only 10. Um, All right, let me give you, let me give another five minutes and then we will, we will begin another five more minutes, all right? <clears throat>
All right, guys. Um, <clears throat> uh, I just, I would, I would love to get your feedback on a matter, just totally unrelated. Um, it's just a thought that comes to mind, and I, I value your opinion. I want to know. I want us to look at things in a different light. Now, <clears throat> there's only one student that joined uh, within the five minutes. So I'm going to begin. Now, say you're walking on the road, wherever, wherever you are. It could be at home. Say you are held up, gunpoint, knife point. It could be a, a water gun. It could be a pen or a pen. So you're held up. And him say, hand up. And I just, I just stare at that for a while ago when I say him, say, because you have some females out there who do this up. The robber says, hand over. Would you hand over? Yes, sir. Why? Sir, I always say this. My life is more valuable than anything. So even if a, a pen, it doesn't matter the value of it. I'm giving it up with no, I'm not resisting. I'm not doing anything. Because sometimes I hold on to things mm -hmm. that bring me down. Because mm -hmm. in the shop, me in my spine, my cripple or something got up. When I could have just give mm -hmm. and sometimes when you lose something, you get something bigger. I don't know, I'm just looking at it positively. So yeah, that's the reason why I won't resist this yeah. And I and I and I and I hear you and I respect your comments and I also seen Jermaine's comment and I am also respecting it. Anybody else? I mean, I won't take long on this. So let's try to be Sir. Well, God, and you'll be able to uh, sir, I, I agree. I agree with them. We'll the only point when I uh, when only point um if it comes to a point where they say that come with me in a car, no, that's a different situation. Because you don't Sorry, know what they might if they say to come with them now. No, that's a different situation. Oh, yeah. Yes. Because then they can't carry a go anywhere now and do whatever they want to. You. Mm -hmm. right, fair enough. Anybody else? I take two more. So I hear from three. I just take two more. Anybody else? Please, somebody just tell me, talk to me. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, sir, I, I agree um, with, um, I can't pronounce her name, but I agree with her because my life is more, <laughs> of more valid than whatever it is that they're taking from me. Yes, Rashi. It's, it's just, I mean, uh, Sash, I'm going to read a message. Sorry, Rash, I agree with you. Yes, Rash. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, guys, you know what Sash tell me? All of him want the clothes, Shaggy in the clothes. Right. As long as I'm not gonna take care of it. No, no, she not, she not, she not, no, she not get what I just close her again and run with him. All right. You see, I asked the question <clears throat> because I was held up at one point at my yard gate. No, not recently, I should say. Hasten to say, not recently. So <clears throat> so I was held up at one point. You know, funny story, I was at it said. Um, I remember I had just, I had finished a chemistry class three o'clock to five o'clock. And one of my chemistry students was going through a hard time. And him say, Mom, talk to me. And he said, all right, after class, we'll talk. And I sat down, spoke with him for about an hour, left exit about six o'clock, reach home, you know, the seven o'clock bells. And just as I was closing the gate, I saw a light coming down and I said, that light looks like my wife coming in. So I stood up at the gate trying, you know, waiting for her to come. <clears throat> and this man walking on the avenue. So from I see the man walking on the avenue, I know something was going to happen. I sensed it. I know something was going to happen, but I couldn't. 
I couldn't move. Why I couldn't move? Because I saw the light of the other car coming and I know whose car it was. So I couldn't go inside and leave her out there alone. So I stood up. This germsy person came and lift up his shirt and put a gun on my stomach and say, give me the car key. And I said to him, that's all you want? I can give you another car key, you know, because funny enough, um, I had visitors overseas and they had blocked the, the car park. So that's why I was outside for so long. Now I'm allowed to just drive it and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a done. I said, you want another car key? You can't get it, you know? He said, yeah, give me. So I said, man, so the car key, it was a rental car key. He said, see, man, take that. I had a Blackberry. Give me the phone. He said, take the phone. He said, take the phone, I'm gone. Then I saw, um, I'm a boy. <laughs> and then I saw um, another guy walking. And I said to myself, good. At least somebody now is seeing that he's holding up with a gun, not recognizing that this was his accomplice. At which point in time, no, my wife got to the gate and this guy pulled the car door, ladies, gentlemen, drive with the car door lock. He pulled the car door and go into the car with my wife with the gun. Long and short is, you know, him say, take the, he want the car. And she said, she now come out of the car. So me look on her and I said, come out of the car. And she said, no, I'm not coming up. And he said, come out of the car. All right. And when she came out of the car, they stole the car and, you know, that. And she was shaking up. And I was, I was like, okay, what just happened? And then the car, the guy crashed the car in front of us. Well, ran the car into my neighbor's car. You know, sometimes in life, you know, we complain about some things and some things are there to save us. So my neighbor across the street always have his visitors who come and double park. So I can't get into my place because of the double parking. And he said, sure, we don't want to be that neighbor that people hear about. So I don't say nothing, but it used to annoy the crap out of me. This particular night, I was so darn happy because you'll have to live where I live in order to maneuver that car. Don't tell me say you're a good driver. You have to know how to maneuver the car. And um, so of course, he's the first time doing something like that and didn't know what to do. So he ran the car into the side of my neighbor's car, set up the alarm and you know, neighbors start come out and say, but wait, I know you're here to go up. I said, yes, I was just held up gunpoint. Long and short is that the phone is la da la di you know, whatever it is. And um, whatever it is, yeah. So when I went to work the Tuesday morning, you know, I was saying to some of them, I'm a student that I was held up last night at gunpoint. And some students I said, oh, you're an idiot. We need to give the care. I said, that's why I am still alive. Because I have sense. The more the care, I give them the care. Um, it's material stuff. I ask the question because I'm looking at a promising only child that was murdered along Ligoni Avenue yesterday. Student from Papine. Um, it's an avenue that I traverse. As a matter of fact, that night when I was held up, that's the avenue I drove on to, to get home. I drove on the avenue today and I was just shaking up with, you know, guys, the man shoot the woman picnic, our uncle picnic. The lady say what? In a cruel piece of tears, they said, and her mother is now grieving the death of her only child some 13 hours after she ironed his suit to wear to her wedding this Saturday. Kenyut Williams, a student of Papine High in St. Andrew was killed around 11.30 while walking to school along the avenue in the parish yesterday. Imagine, somebody can say a school you to them cell phone, a school you to you know with them cell phone. You know, so we have come out of a pandemic and the youth would have used cell phone for online class. The, the youth would have done class and I got through and you, you shoot the youth and left you to you know, shoot the youth and then run. It's a passerby. See the youth on the road, you know. 
and stop on Kangaroo Hospital. The youth now move and take up the youth in Kangaroo Hospital, kill the woman quickly. Ah. Let me just one enough, you see? Let me one enough, good and proper. If a man come and say, he want a cell phone, I don't care if he just spend 15 or 16 um, hundred US dollars for the phone, give it to him. Your life is much more precious than going into a box with ice. Give it to him. Give it to him. Make him go on with it because chances but are. Aaron, if I give it, you, sir. Yeah? All right, sir. My opinion still, if you only come to vanity and them stuff, so things are replaceable. I'm not really mm. stressed about it. If a man come to me and want my vehicle, I just have to give him and say, go on. Because at the end of the day, I know he might take it hard, but at the end of the day, me eventually I get over it and I can eventually get another vehicle. Sometimes things just happen fairly easy, you know, sir. So that's why I look for it more while, well, you know. Next time you come like you're my brother. You come like you are my brother. Same, same so next time, same so. Just have a drink or a forget it. Sir, I see you. I really talk, man. I saw me look for things, you know, sir. Next time. People I said, I said, no, but no, you're, you're right. What I'm saying, what I said to you next time is that the car that we gave up was a new car. <clears throat> and I said, go, go, because I mean, you guys wouldn't have known me. This happened about 2009. You guys wouldn't have known me. All right. And I remember when I stood up there with the gun on my stomach, I mean, I say it pointed at me, you know. The gun literally touch my belly. I'm a look down on the ground. I'm a put and I, and I was just visioning the blood running down on the incline. And I said, nope, I will not die this way. Mr. Bridgen, where you want? May I tell you not? If you know anything about biology, think of anything that we call peristaltic constriction. Means say everything inside the intestine just liquefy. I squeeze me off the squeeze you know, myself myself. Because I said to myself, said Jesus, I yes, I'm ever dead. I'm a yard yet. I said, no, Father. I said, that's not how you wrote the script. I can't tell you, Father. And I saw you write the script. Um, you know, I'm happy that you're a suspect. Yes, Papa. I've seen too much CCTV <laughs> camera footage of persons mm -hmm. trying to resist. There was one I in, uh, mm -hmm. um, well, I think it was Lincoln inside as well, where a bite man was delivering pizza. And the man then come mm -hmm. right behind him and pull a gun. Him try to run off and him just shoot him. Oh no. A lady, a lady was there walking, uh, walking on the street. I don't I can't identify where exactly, but she was walking on the street. Or oh, the one in the, the um, one in Linstead, where the bike man just come grab her bag and jump on the bike. The, no, it was the one whereby she was walking with a phone in her hand. And okay. the man right past and try to grab the phone, but missed the phone. And him just turn around and come back for her. And she did try to run the other way, but another one just come right behind her. Oh, no. So them, so them working up here is always, always suspects that she going to have a friend. And there's another video on Facebook mm -hmm. whereby, mm -hmm. like, when well, Ross, Ross, they are walk down, down, you know, like a alley like way. A man come mm -hmm. right behind him. You know, they throw coal with a knockout and grab yeah. him that way. And the next man they are what this opposite direction just come and dip him on them and pack it and just left him down on the ground like him there gas for ear. Yes, and I saw that. Take away. All right. Not now they're they catching them like still you know. Five seconds. Yeah, man, they catch them, catch them though. They catch them. Mm -hmm. But still, it's because yeah. I, it's, it's because I'm being recorded. Um, you can talk to me afterwards. How I think they're supposed to treat them. Um, you know. It 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 hard. It hard for a mother send a child to school at William Neighbor and them fighting over a guard ring and one take a knife and stab the other one, kill him. It is hard writing a for backyard at Excelsior that a student, a grade level student, was stabbed yesterday on, on, on campus. Right? I don't even know the status of the student now. All right? Right over the high school. That is too close for comfort. Very technical high school, two girls are five. I'm going to teach them in the middle of them. And you know, one of the things, this is my final point, and then I move on. Forgive me. You know, one of the things that 
um, I remember, oh Lord, this is before the pandemic. I remember I was sitting in my office downstairs on the second floor and <clears throat> heard a commotion upstairs. And I said to myself, you know what? We you know going on in a commotion you know, because then people you know, have no behavior. I mean, I'm not going to know commotion, go, go take no lick for nobody. No, negative. And the commotion was getting out of hand, so I decided to go upstairs. Uh, when I went upstairs, I saw a fight. And I decided that I was going to go between the two people them, to tell them, say, oh, no, go easy. And I remember one of, one of them said to me, say, man, you know, me said, just be careful. Say, I'm me, I look on. It was two girls. I said, man, you know. And the girl said, Mr. Sean, come out of the way. Me said, no, nah, come out of the way. But me said, don't lick me. No, lick me. I thought that students who were around, who were jeering the more aggressive of the two, would have tried to calm her, so forth and so on. The man, the mom, on cell phone out on a video. And I'm saying to myself, the fact that I saw on TikTok last night at your technical, the students there cheering each other, have cell phone out and video in the, the, the fight, as opposed to pulling someone and say, no, Charlene, it can't be that young Sasha too good a friend to that. Them, you know. I'm until them see it get serious, you know, sir. I say it's going to be easy with them people. No, yes. but no, but guess what? Until, when, it, when it gets serious, it's too late because it means that there's a knife in the person's chest. It's too late. No, listen to me. Me and God have a conversation, you know, because me, no thinks after spending about 25 years in the classroom as teacher, me think it's time for me to call it quits. No, because I, me don't know, me don't know, it, um, Norman Manley, I saw a video of Norman Manley, two, two boys, a stab up teacher. And you believe that, you would believe that um, the students would try to, 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 to intervene. No, they are jeering and they are going on and they are encouraging, you know, guys, I'm just telling you, um, we have to do what we need to do. And one of the things that we need to do is just to use common sense here. Use common sense. Um, yes, I know you had to purchase this stuff and you know do what it is that you need to do with this stuff, but mm -mm, serious times, serious times, serious times, serious times, serious times. So just be careful, please. I beg of you. Um, it's very, very, very important that you are you, you need to. To be vigilant wherever you go. All right. Now, um, there was a question that was posed in the in the in the WhatsApp. Um, didn't get a chance to to respond to it. I acknowledge receipt of it nonetheless. And just allow me now, question four. Let me put a fifth question here. Just allow me now to just walk you through that question call that question five sure, before you start um you made a mistake with one of the ver vertical as um asymptotes you copied uh, you copied one and, and didn't make the change to the other oh so i copied i copied the answer for one of them for, for a previous question i never made a change in it right okay come on come on come on i mean guilty as charge you know that I mean, without even knowing which other questions I'm talking about, guilty as charged. You know, we love copy and paste, right? Like I'm being right here now with question five. <clears throat> All right, I will look at the I will look at the vertical asymptote a little later on, so that we can make adjustments to the to the to the document. All right, so I think you need. Uh, that could be level four. You start. Up by top, it has a read only. Oh crap. I hate when it happens like this. All right, never mind. It's just I have to say it as a different name and then um. All right, thank you, Papa. <clears throat> All right. Um, so Yoni, place a question in the in the in the chat. 
I have to use it still because I mean, I started making so much of screens. I don't even um, know what or not to do. Anyway, um, it says something about, um, let me see if I can find a question. Can somebody read a question for me, please? The one that was posted in the group by Yoni. Right, sir, I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, find an approximation of the square root of 37 using the method of small changes. Ah. Uh. All right, so find the approximation of the root of 37 using a method of small changes. All right, so what, what were we, all right, thanks, Son. What we're gonna be doing is utilizing um, the same sort of formulation that we were introduced to. Um, squiggly, squiggly y is approximately equal to dy by dx times squiggly x. Squiggly y is gonna be equal to dy by dx, approximately equal to d by dx, because remember, you know, we're finding an approximation. It's not the exact value that we're doing, we're doing an approximation. So we're gonna say squiggly y is approximately equal to d by dx times squiggly x. Remember squiggly y is what it is that we're trying to evaluate and, and squiggly x is gonna be the change, the small change that occurred in, 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 in the approximation, all right? So just remember squiggly y approximately equals to d by dx, um, times squiggly x. Now you're gonna ask the question, you're gonna ask the question, how do I, how are we gonna get d by, by dx from something like this, sir, when there is no, when there is no variable? Good question. So what I'm gonna do here, and um, so I'm gonna let, hold on. So I'm gonna let, <clears throat> I'm gonna let y, oh crap, undo. <laughs> I love copy and paste, it is um, copy. I'm gonna let r, right, hold on now, my, my system. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna let y paste. I'm gonna let y be equal to the root of x. <clears throat> it asks me to find a root of 37. Okay, let me ask the question first before I even go any further. Um, can anybody guesstimate what the what the square root of 37 is gonna be? Somebody just guesstimate and just tell me something. 6 point something. 6 point something, excellent. Excellent answer. Excellent answer, excellent answer. I'm proud of you. It means that your, your brain space is going. Excellent answer. Um, I hope I got six point something because the, we know that the, 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 the square root of 36 is six. So that means 37. And we know that the square root of 49 is seven. We are closer to 36 than we are to 49. True or false? Yeah. Right. So we know our answer is closer to six than it is to seven. So if you ask me, sir, how, what is the approximation of the root of 37? I'm going to set a 6.1 to one decimal place. I am just going to set a 6.1. We now go more than 0.1, you know why? Because that is 37. And I know 36, the square root of, of 36 is going to be 6. Now, if that had been like the square root of 45, I know it would be like about 6.8, talk truth. 
Sure. Because it's closer to seven. It's closer to the 49. Excellent. So I'm happy that you're seeing that. Thanks, Sash. All right. <clears throat> so let's go. So we're looking at the square root of 36. I'm going to let y be equal to the root of x. I'm letting y be equal to the root of x. Right? And I'm going to say where x. <clears throat> Why am I in this? All right, let me just fix it one, once and for all. Hold on. Where X is the unknown, right? So I'm letting X be the unknown, all right? <clears throat> So we're going, to be, we're going to be guessing a number. So the, what, are, what we're going to, we're going to be guessing a number. So we're going to guess G-U-E-S-S, G-U-E-S-S. -S. So we're going to guess um, a number that is close to 37 and a perfect square. Why a perfect square? No remember. It's a rounded number. It's a rounded number. Remember, I'm finding the square root. You see that? Yes, sir. So if I was if I was finding the cube root, I'll find a number that is a what? That is cube, don't it? Okay. Yes, sir. All right, yeah. good. All right, so, so I'm gonna guess a number and of course, um, <clears throat> guess a number close to 37 and a perfect square. So I'm gonna guess um, 36. So I'm gonna let x to be equal to 36. All right, so I'm going to let x equals to 36. Now, <clears throat> based on what it is that we have been doing, and look at this down here, squiggly y is equal to approximately equals to d by dx times squiggly x. What is squiggly x again? I told you last class. What is squiggly x? What, what does it represent? The difference between. Very good. What would be the difference in, for squiggly x now? One. Very good. So squiggly x, oh, come on. <clears throat> and squiggly x is going to be equal to one. Remember, you know, we're trying to find squiggly y. Squiggly y, we still don't know. We can't take that. Where are you from? Where one? Huh? Oh, 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 OK, OK, OK. My, 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 my. All right, no problem. I'm happy when I'm happy when you can see it on your own. All right. So for those of you who don't see it yet, we came by the one because we started off with 37, and we are only guessing 36. So we know that our change is going to be one. So squiggly wise, what it is that you're trying to find? We know that x is equals to 36, and Squiddly one, squiddly x is going to be equal to one. So what we're going to be doing now, <clears throat> remember you now we're in calculus. So everything we need to start thinking differentiation. So we now need to find dy by dx. Very right, that's sir. Yeah, very nice, very nice, Lexton. Very nice. Um <clears throat> All right, so my y equals the root of x, I'm going to have it as y equals x raised to the half power. And when I differentiate x raised to the half power, I'm going to get um, 1 over 2 the root of x. So, 
You know, see it. Right, not a problem. Let me just do something here. <clears throat> All right. So when I when I when I differentiate this, this half is going to come in front. So it's going to be a half x. I always subtract one from the power. So it's going to come a half x to the minus a half. So this one half is going to multiply in front of the parent, not the parenthesis, but in front of the x, and I'm subtracting one from this, so a half minus one is going to be negative a half. And then this negative a half is the same thing as putting this x, in order to convert it to the negative a half to positive, I'll have to put the x to the half in the denominator. So let me just kill two birds with one stone by doing a put. A little review on this thing here so you can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so I'm going to have x to the positive a half. And x to the positive a half is the same thing as writing the root of x. All right? So I know what my d by by dx is. Now recall the formula. See the formula here? The formula says it's changing y is going to be equals to d y by dx times the change in x. No, if we look at this, if we look at this, we know the change in y is what we're trying to find. And we know that d y by dx is equal to all of that. So what I can do is to say, copy this. <clears throat> One over two, the root of x. And the question is not this long here, it's just that I'm typing and doing this stuff. I really want to show you what it looks like. Times one. No, undo. Let me not do it like that. Then I copy this now, paste again. No, I want to copy you. Copy. All right, so what I'm gonna have now, I'm, I'm substituting my, my dy by dx. Let me just get rid of this here. I'm substituting my dy by dx times my change in x. But I know that my x is 36. So we get that from, see here? I am letting x to be equal to 36. Then sir, let me ask you a question. Could I make x 35? If you make x 35, you're not going to get a perfect squares. I think, was it Lexon? Somebody said it in class. We need something that is a perfect squares. So I'm not going to look at 35 because 35 is not a perfect squares. Okay, sir. Then what if I use 25? You tell me, what is going to happen if you use 25? Is that close or is it too far off? Far off, sir. It's way too far, way, 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 way too far off, man. You're trying to get as close to the number as you possibly can. Small changes. You're trying to get as close to the number as you possibly can. So I know that my x is 36, and I know the root of 36 is, is 6. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have um, all of that. I'm going to have all of that. Sorry, I'm typing. Times times six. 
as I said before, I am typing it out so that you can all, why is this thing not coming out? Sure. So you can see what it looks like. The question is not going to be this long. All right, so I'm going to have two times six. I'm going to end up with one twelve because one times all of that is just going to give me one. So I'm going to have all of that here being equals to one twelve. Now, is that the final answer? <clears throat> I look like it, sir. Yeah, but you may know it can't be just one twelve alone. You know, one to the original number. Let me just write it. <clears throat> Let me just go back to what it is that we did for some differentiation, some long time ago. Some long time differentiation. And I want to see if you guys, yes, honey. So you're going to put it back in the square form? I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll have to put it back there. Yeah, I'll have to put it back there. All right, look, 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 look at this here. When you see f of x plus h, what do you remember? What a topic? First, first principles. First principles, man. First yeah. principles. Yeah. yeah, man. I, I remember Sir said to you, as h tends to zero, and I always said to you that h is a small change. Anybody remember that? No, nobody remember when the says H is a small change. Sorry, small in memory. <laughs> yeah, man. So I said to you that F of X plus H is H is going to be very small. It's a small change. And that small change, you now when it is that you have incorporated that small change, you're going to take back your original function. And then that small change is what it is that you're left with, and which is going to give you the differential. So in this year case, I know we're going to have my F of X plus my f dash of x times h, which is my small change here. So this small change here is going to be 112, right? And my f of x is going to be the root of 36, which is going to be 6 plus 112, all right? So let me just write that there. Let me just put it in here. You see, it comes back the root of 36. Everything that we're doing, it carries forward. I don't want to think that the question is long. The question isn't long. The question isn't long. I am doing this because I want to type it out so that at least when you get this, the handout, you are seeing what I'm having here, right? This is a, this, this can't be more than three, four marks. How many marks they gave you for that? All right, so. My f of x is going to be the root of 36 because remember, I'm changing the question now, you know, right? I'm changing the question. Um, my f of x, my function, my function f of x is equal to y. But if, I'm let, if I am letting x to be 36, what I can have is y equals the root of 36, which is what I have here technically, y equals the root of 36, plus my small change here, which is 112. So I'm going to have no 6 plus 112. So my f of x plus h is going to be equal to the root of 37, incidentally. So I can change this now to the root of 37. And I can also change here to the root of 37. And then, what is 112? Somebody find that out for me, please. Decimal time. Yeah, in decimal form. Zero point uh, zero eight three. Would it? Yeah, two, two three decimal places. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um.
So that's how I get the approximation um, to be 6.083. I knew it was going to be six point something. I knew it. How, sir? Because we went as we, we found a perfect square close to the number that we are looking at, which is 37. And the closest square, perfect square number we're talking about is 36. So we are starting 36. But don't start to 25 because 25 is too far off. And we're talking about a small change. We are referring to a small change. All right? So we start off with our 36. And then now we're going to look at that small change to be 1. And then we'll go through with the question. You all saw what I did. Are there any questions? Um, not really a question, but um, I I had, I saw um, I can call it no a small pattern here. Mm -hmm. All right, so I I did it, I I thought it would have been the same six point zero eight three because I was checking if I can scroll back up a bit. Let me just look back at something. Scroll back down, right there, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. <clears throat> So I realized that you 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 had mentioned that um dy by dx is one over twelve, and the small change is already one, right? So, um, I would say I I, I was thinking that um you would want to find but the square root of thirty six, and then you do the calculation um that is there, which give you about the same six point zero eight three. Which mm -hmm. is also the, 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 the square root of 37. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Um, what I'll do is I don't want to consume too much of our time um, on this, this particular example. I can write you some other examples just for you to, to, to try in the interim. But I like, I, like, I like what it is that I'm seeing in terms of me teaching now you're going into the past papers and trying to get questions to work. Um, very good. And um, send them on. I will do the very best I can. If not immediately, I, I will definitely do it. I know last time I sat down after class to do the question. I know I start off the class with this question. Just to keep us going, all right? Question, is there, um, is there any difficulty with it? Are you all seeing what is happening here? Yes, sir. Yeah. For any, I don't know about anybody else. Sure, the first, the reach are probably the one to. Whenever that thing go, the first principle. Yeah, and you see, and, and, and let me tell you something. You see, when you reach right here, so when you reach at one twelve, I am only showing you here, so to show you that boy, um, the f of x plus h is going to be my original plus my increment, and this is my original plus my small change, plus my small change here. So I'm just bringing back now the whole business of, of first principles to you to show you exactly what is happening. So if you had moved from this 112 and then go ahead and add your six to it, I wouldn't kill you. But I, I, I want to show you where I got the six from because next thing we said, sir, where you get the six from? So I had to show you that from here, this piece here is what it is that we would have used um, originally in, in, in this cal or in calculus one um, when we were doing our first principles differentiation that I know you all know how to do, all right? And then from there, we just go ahead and just add back our sticks and we get our other questions. As I said before, I can generate some for you um, and you start doing the stuff. As I said, is it's it's a good look to see, you know, work um, beginning, you know, on the past papers. Um, a move that I will recommend 100%, I want you to always continue um, engaging in. All right. So if there are no further questions, just allow me to jump across. Allow me to jump across. Mm. I want to jump across to somewhere, but it's not giving me the option to. 
is because I don't think the open is the payment. So smart. <clears throat> Hmm. So we're in our unit two. We're in our unit two. And um Mm. Let me just give you a, uh, let me just give you a, a, a quick little thing here. I don't remember seeing it on your on your syllabus, but let me give you. Let me give it to you nonetheless. Um, I'm not coming in very hard tonight at the at, at this. It's gonna be it's gonna be a pretty um, smooth sailing until and I'm not spending long on the mean value theorem. This is pretty easy to to to, to understand. Um, Tiana should remember this um, very well. We did a lot of this, and we also looked at this in in our calculus one. Maybe not called, maybe not with the same formulation, but um, what it is that we would have done, it could have worked out to be the same thing. All right, let us look at this here. So we're saying that calculus boasts two mean value theorems. And there are times we'll go into the exam and say MVT. MVT, mean value theory. So calculus both two. One for derivative, one for differentiation, one for integration. So calculus both two mean value theorem. We talk about mean value theorem for differentiation. We talk about mean value theorem for integration. I'm just going to briefly show you the mean value theorem for differentiation. Why? because I don't remember seeing it on the differentiation something. And I said to myself, you know, let me, or maybe it's there and I overlook it, but I said, let me just put it in here, even though I am now on applications of integration. Let me just put this in there. All right, so I want you to look at it. So the mean value theorem for differentiation, if F is continuous on a closed interval AB, and it is differentiable on an open interval A comma B, then there exists a number C in AB such that F prime of C, which is a first differential at the point C is going to be equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. F of B, F of A would be your, your interval. B is the upper limit, A is the lower limit. So you always subtract the lower one from the upper one. So it's always going to be F of B minus F of A, and it's going to be B minus A. That's what the mean value theorem is for differentiation, right? Now, um, I want to get into the graph. I was sketching a graph here, but I want to get into the graph. Let's just look at, um, so there's a value C that is contained in here, right? There exists a C that is contained in my interval A, comma B, watch me. It says, given that F of X is equal to X cubed plus four X for the interval negative one comma one, I'm supposed to be using the mean value theorem in order to find that value. So look at what is happening. I'm using my upper limit. So I'm going to find f of one anywhere in the function f of x, I see x, I put one. So this becomes f of one, well, I did it the reverse. Um, f of one is going to be equal to one cubed plus four times one, 
and one cube is one plus four times one, which is four, one plus four is equal to five. I'm also doing it for negative one. Anywhere in the function x, i, c, anywhere in the function f of x, i, c, x, I'm gonna put negative one. So this number comes f of negative one is equal to negative one q plus four times negative one. Always remember, when you raise a negative number to an odd power, your result is negative. So negative one to the third power is going to be negative one. And four times negative one is negative four. So negative one minus four is going to give you minus five. So this end point here, when X is negative one, Y is going to be negative five, which is why I have negative one comma five. When X is one, my Y is going to be five, which is another end point. So I have two end points. One end point is negative one comma five, and the other end point is going to be one comma five. Um, and the end points will be A and B. So see the end points I'm referring to here, this does not refer exactly to the question that I have on screen, but it's just a, the idea that comes. So it's going to be one end point here, A, and the other end point here, B, all right? So you have your end points. Now let us look at the slope of the end points. Let us look at the slope. So what is the slope? The gradient. Remember, you know, we're doing mean value theorem for differentiation. We're looking at the mean value theorem for differentiation. And what, what, <laughs> what a lot of us teachers didn't tell you, and I'm hoping that the teachers know that this is what they're doing. What a lot of us teachers never tell you when you're doing coordinate geometry and finding the equation of a line and the gradient of a line. You find the gradient of a line is actually differentiating, you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is the slope. The slope is the differential. The slope is the differential. So I remember, you know, doing ad math and CXC maths pretty much at the same time. You recognize this sort of relationship. So when you go into the exam and give you a question to find the slope of the function, are you supposed to use y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1? If you go ahead and differentiate the function and do what you're supposed to do, you can get your answer. So when you're, when you're marking for the, 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 the CXC exam, if a student has a prior knowledge and differentiate the function instead of using the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We still have to award the full marks, all right? So when we look at the slope at the endpoints, we are actually differentiating. We are finding the gradient at that particular point. So y2 minus y1, this of course is my x1 value, my x2 value. This is my x1 value, my x2 value. So I'm gonna have, um, if I call one set y1, x1, and y1, that means the other value has to be called x2 and y2. So let me see which one I use as my x1. All right, so um, x2, y2, y2. Sorry, let me see if I can just do something here, y2. Mm -hmm. Y one. All right. So I'm showing you that this is my Y one. Ah, uh, can't be Y one, sir. Sean. It has to be X one. What is wrong with you? X two rather. All right. Um, All right, so this is my X1, my Y1. I can't have X1 and then Y2. So if I'm using this as my first set of coordinates, it's gonna be X1, Y1, and this will have to be my second set of coordinates, which is X2, Y2. 
So therefore, substituting it in this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, wherever I see x2, I'm going to put negative 5. So it's going to be negative 5 minus y1 is 5. So it's going to be negative 5 minus 5. See if I drop here, so? And then my x2 is going to be negative 1 minus 1. See if I drop here, so? Negative 1 minus 1. So negative 5 minus 5 is going to be negative 10. And minus 1 minus 1 is going to be minus 2. And negative 10 divided by minus 2 is going to be equal to 5. So the slope is going to be equal to 5. All right? The slope is going to be equal to 5. Now, I ask the question, what similarity does this have to f? f of c is equal to b, um, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Does it be the same slope? Let us check. So I am saying to you, we are finding the slope using y2 minus y1. I am giving you some formulation here to say f dash of c is going to be equal. To, oh, but sir, f dash of c on the slope at the point c, sir. And if you just found the gradient here, that means the two of them are supposed to be the same. All right, let us check the c. So if you're looking at f of c, f of c says it's going to be f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Um, what, is, what is f of b? Anybody remember what f of b was? Um, remember, this is a. This one is a and this one is b. Let me let me put that there. <clears throat> I don't want anybody to have a difficulty when you're going through. So let me just when I was doing the notes for you, I didn't. Well, I didn't have to do it because it's online. I want you to see what does that mean. Right. So we have our f of a and our sorry, we have our a and our b. Remember now, it's going to be f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Your b is going to be the bigger value, all right? And it is closed, all right? Now, what is my f of b? My f of b is when I find, when I put b into the given function. When I put b into the given function here, which is f of 1, which is my f of b, <clears throat> this thing is, takes a lot of time which is my f of b i'm going to get five for my f of b i'm going to get five for my f of b let me look at my f of a now my f of a My f of a, which is negative one, is going to be equal to negative five. So if I go through the formula, f of b minus f of a, f of b is five. See here, f of b is five, and f of a is negative five. It's going to be five minus a negative five. See here, so five minus a negative five over b minus a. But remember, b is positive one, and a is negative one. So it's going to be 1 minus a negative 1. So when we look at it now, 5 minus minus 5 is going to be positive 10. And 1 minus minus 2 is going to be 1 minus minus 1 is going to be equal to 2. So I still get my 10 over 2, which is still equal to 5. So it does. It is equal. It is equal. It is equal. All right? Um, what a question pass to find? given that, okay, right, right? So it is equal. So we're going to find the endpoints or I go about um, using my f of b minus my f of a over b minus a, I will still end up with the same answer. I will still end up with the same answer. Look at this here. So if I recall here, if I recall here, my f of x is going to be equal to x cubed plus for x, this was my given question. Now my f dash of x, when I differentiate the function, I'm going to have 3x squared plus 4. 
right here, so. 3x squared plus 4. No, my f dash of c is 5. So how do you get that? See it here, so. Remember, you know, this would be my differential. It's actually f dash of c is equal to b, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So I left off my dash right here. Copy on case. Oh boy. All right. So my f dash of c, my f dash of c then, which is equal to five. My f dash of c, which is equal to five, is me setting this function here, three x squared plus four equals five. But I know that there is a number between, there's a number that exists between a and b that is contained in a and b. There is a number that is contained between A and B, and I'm going to call that number C. So I don't need to find what that number is. So when I substitute the differential to be equal to F dash of C, no, differential is equal to differential. I'm going to have that number C that I'm going to substitute for because that's what I know is contained in the interval A, B. So I'm going to have three C squared plus four is equal to five. And when I, I'm trying to solve that, I'm going to have 3c squared is equal to 5 minus 4. And I'm going to get c squared to be equal to 1 third. And when we square root both sides, we're going to get all of that. And you don't need to know the rationalization, I guess not. All right? So this is a value of c that is contained in the interval a, b. Now, if sure. you look back at this, go ahead. Where do you get the four from, sir? I differentiate it. This four? I differentiate it. Oh. Now hold that x squared. I differentiate it. You follow? Yes, sir. All right, good. Um, so I just want us to check before I move into the integration part. As I said before. I would have thought of doing this because I didn't see that and I need to double check the mean value for differentiation. So I'm saying that the value of C, remember now, come again, your F dash of C is gonna be equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. If F is continuous on the closed interval A comma B and it is differentiable on the open interval A comma B, then there exists a number in C, a number C in this A comma B. So within this particular region, there is a number C that when I do my differential, I can find it. So F dash of C, so when I find my differential and substitute C of it, F of C in it, I'm gonna find that number that lies within this particular range. Um, Can somebody, can somebody evaluate the root of three over three for me, please? Evaluate the root of three over three for me and tell me what you get. Hello? Hello, somebody? Am I muted? That's the question, sir. I wanted to evaluate the root of three over three for me. The root of three over three. Mm -hmm. 
0.5 okay. What was my interval again? Negative one one. Very good. Does do, does point five seven seven lie between negative one and one? Yes, sir. Right. So that's what it is that we're talking about. So in, in the differential, in my interval, A comma B, there lies a number C between those numbers that when I go ahead and find my, F dash of C is going to be equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A, I can evaluate the, 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 the number. Now, what I normally see, where I normally see the answer a lot of these questions is merely in the multiple choice. By using the mean value theorem, um, determine whatever it is, C, yeah, and I can, I can find a, a, a multiple choice question I give to you. Um, it's, it's, it's not necessary, necessarily to teach you the question, but to show you what it is that we're doing, all right? So the mean value theorem for, for differentiation is going to be F dash of C, which is going to be equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now, let me just pause right here so to say something to you critically. Every single one of the something then that we use in unit one, including this one, has some formulation, true or false? True. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do, guys, I beg of you, I implore you, I ask that you know the formulation so it is that you can't get off. All right? But what you need to remember here now, so when we, when, we, when, we, when we find F dash of C, you recognize F dash of C is 5, and 5 does not lie within that interval A, B, because remember the interval A, B is negative 1, 1. So you now have to substitute this for the differential. So you have to differentiate the function because you have two differentials now. So both differentials must be equal. You have a differential, which is three X squared plus four. And you have this differential here, which is F dash of C is equal to five. So this now becomes F dash of C, which is going to be equal to three X squared plus four equals five. See it right here, so. And then I am going to be solving for the value of C or values of C in this case. So I'm going to get C to be equal to plus or minus the root of one third. When rationalized, gives you root three over three, all right? Um, and that's what it is. Really not difficult. Um, sir, and you, sir. Um, and you said we don't need to worry about the rationalize. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry. I wouldn't worry too much about the rationalization just yet. Um. I wouldn't worry about it just because yet. It, okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you give me this as an answer, I'll mark it. Uh, let me, let me, and I'm using just yet because I am still going through the syllabus as we, as I prepare for you from week to week or class to class. I am, I am holding this syllabus very closely because I want to make sure that I, I do justice to it so that there is no question that comes on the paper that, you know, you're, you're not familiar with, um, you know, similar to what it is that you would have done for the calculus while you were able to, you know, to recognize the questions. I want you to be able to so recognize and do a little bit more than the recognition, but to answer the questions well. All right. Um, mm, okay. So, so this is where I want us to, 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 to go now. Um, this is where I want us to go. The mean value theorem for integration um, is an next formulation. But as you as you as you saw in the in the example I just did, the mean value theorem for differentiation, we had to differentiate. So by extension, the mean value theorem for integration, you would expect us to integrate. All right. So let PQ be part of the curve, the graph of a function y equals f of x. And this is my PQ here, all right? Then now, I'm going to let PA, which is this line here, QB, 
which is this line here, be coordinates at P and Q, sit here. So remember when we're doing our integration, is the area under the curve that we are integrating. So my A, my PA and my QB forms that area under this curve, PQ. Let PQ be part of the graph of the function y equals f of x. PA and QB be coordinates at P and Q. And I'm saying that OA, my OA is equals to A. And my OB, the whole length of it now is going to be equals to B. So from here to here is like a vector. It's going to be equals to A. And then my OB is going to be equals to little b. Then the area of the region, the area of the region under the curve A, P, Q, B. The area under the curve here, A, Q, P, B, is going to be given by the integral of f of x dx using my upper limit b and my lower limit a. The same little b and little a we're talking about, right? But sir, we know this. Yeah, you do, because we've done integration. Watch me. So I'm going to let a, b, c, d be a triangle. a, b, c, d be a triangle with equal area to that of triangle. A. You know, you, you, you know what I mean, do You see what, so what I'm calling triangle A, B, C, D? Yeah, a rectangle with, <laughs> with equal area, thank you, hon, equal area to that of A, P, Q, B. A, P, Q, B. So this rectangle is going to be equal area to that of my area under the curve. That is, this piece here from up here, so I'm going to let DC meet the curve at L. This DC line is going to meet the curve at this point. So this L is a point on the curve, PQ. Look at what happens. I'm going to draw LM parallel to the y-axis. This LM I'm drawing parallel to the y-axis. Parallel means say, the two of them line up. This line, the, the, the y-axis line, on the liner, we're in the same direction, and guess what? They will never, ever, ever, ever meet, right? So that's parallel um, to, the, to, the y, to the y axis to meet at the x axis at M. See here, so it meet down here, so at M. As the area of triangle, of rectangle A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D is going to be equals to A, B times L, M. A, B times L, M. Sir, duh, I mean, that's what we know. That's what we do in, in little school. So if this is a rectangle, A, B, C, D, this area, L, M, is going to be the height of the rectangle and it's going to be the, the, the length of the rectangle. So it's going to be A, B times L, M. See that, sir. See that, A, B times L, M. Length multiplied by width. Then the area, of LM is going to be the area of ABCD over AB. Area of ABCD over AB. Similarly, the area of APQB, which is this one here, is also going to be over AB. And then I'm going to end up with that. What it is that I just did a while ago was just to prove the mean value theorem for integration. And somebody, must, somebody may say, sir, I am not interested in the proof. Just give me the formula, we can work the formula. Fair enough, I will give you the notes so you can reread it, re -read it. But I have to show you because um, I've never been guilty of, of just going to a class and just giving students a formulation um, without, without showing you the derivation of the formula you have a better understanding as to what is happening. Yes, I know it's a lot of A, B, C, D, and I don't have everything on one page for you to look at it. So you can go back and look at the stuff. But this LM, which is going to be the integral of f of x dx over b minus a, is what is where I want to put our focus for tonight. Why? LM is called the mean value of the ordinates. Is it a word here? Ordinates. Let's note for it. 
you may hear more of it. It's a new word that I'm introducing to, introducing you to, and I want you to know it. I want you to be able to describe what it is. So you may give us a description, no. I'm going to tell you, but you are going to be able to describe it. So LM is called the mean value of the ordinates of the curve for the interval A to B, from X equal A to X equal B. So this is my mean value theorem. So it means that I'm gonna inter integrate my function, my given function, that's what it means, using the upper and the lower limits over B minus A. Oh, so, so that B uh, are the same B like here, so. Mm -hmm. And this A, sir, are the same A. Okay, sir, I think I get it. So remember, the mean value theorem for differentiation is going to be F dash of C is equal to F of B minus F of A over B minus A. That's the mean value for differentiation. The mean value of integration is going to be F of C is going to be equal to the integral of F of X dx, B A over B minus A. Best believe that the denominators for both are the same. All right? Let's go. It says to determine the value or values of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem for integrals for the function y equals x squared over the interval 0, 0,4. Rockstone, sir. Let me see if we get what I want to say, sir. We need to determine the value or values. Oh, that means we don't know if I want or two or three or four. Mm. Of C. Oh, but sir, you say that C is going to be a number that lies somewhere betwixt my interval. Oh, so that means a C will go between zero and four, sir. Then sir, if you get C to be more than or outside of the interval, that can work? No, because C lies within. All right, let us check it. So we need to determine the value or values of C guaranteed by the mean value theorem for integrals for the function y equals x squared over the interval. What's the first thing you're going to do? Let me see if you're thinking. What's the first thing you need to do? Differentiator. Integrator. 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 Right. So you're going to, what's the upper limit? Four. Four. And the lower Zero. limit? Zero. Zero. All right. I am going for some water. I want you to integrate this function for me. And then you're going to tell me the value of the integral. Very good. Start from it, please. I give you two minutes to integrate it. Um, and, to, and, 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 and it's a definite integral because you know the upper limit and the lower limit. So the integral is definite. All right. All of you, please, not only one. I'm going to call upon somebody, anybody, to tell me what your integral is. All right. Yeah.
what was your integral? Um, let's see, let's see. Oh, 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 oh. Sixty-four over three. Sixty-four over three. Same. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody got that, or somebody got something different? Ah, excellent. So it's going to be sixty-four thirds. And then remember what the final part of the mean value theorem says: b minus a. So over four minus zero. Talk truth. Talk to me now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So similar to what it is that we have before, we're going to have our C squared to be equal to this. 64 thirds over four. So I please go over four, four over one. For ease of calculation. Okay, ah, no problem. Thanks for your honesty. For ease of calculation, I'm gonna have 64 over three, no multiply by one over four. See, Jerry? No multiply by one over four. And multiplying across. Sasha, see this? Yes, sir. Um, I copy the same thing. I was supposed to do something else, but I copy the same thing. So you have to see with me. I wanted to show you something. I like um, breaking things down so that when you are reading over your own, nobody has to be wondering. So look at what happened. So this 64, this four going to four one time and four into 64 goes another time, 16 times. So 16 times one is 16. And, um, and three times one is gonna be three. So I'm gonna have 16 over three. And of course I'm gonna find the square root of 16 thirds because I don't want C squared. I want C. When I find a square root of that, I'm going to get all of this, which is roughly 2.31. And guess what? Remember, our, 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 our interval was 0 and 4. So 2.31 lies, C lies within our interval 2 and 4. So I know that works. I think that's what the question answers are fine. The question did say to us to determine the value of C is guaranteed by the mean value theorem for the integral, right? So this is going to be guaranteed. Um, I was doing a graph here, but x squared. All right, let us leave that out for, for, for now. Um, do me a favor. I want to show you something. Oh, look at this here, guys. You see when, I mean, I know you guys know how to integrate. Um, every one of you, I mean, all, all 18 of you, 17 of you in class tonight, I know you know how to integrate, right? I spoke um, confidently about differentiation because I was doing applications to differentiation. I will now speak confidently about integration because I know you all know how to integrate. Now look at, let me just caution you on something. So all of you in class just know got your, Six to four thirds. But you know the formula that says 
it's supposed to be over B minus A. So you'll go ahead and say, okay, four minus zero is four. So you will divide six to four thirds by four. But remember that is F of C, you know? That's F of C. Now, let Y be equals to X squared, which is what the function that was given, which is also equals to F of X. So it's going to imply, it's going to imply that f of c is going to be equal to c squared because if substituting c in the value here, it's going to be equal to c squared. So remember, it's not just to divide the six to four thirds by the four over one and call that c, it is going to be c squared as is defined by the original function. You notice for the mean value theorem here, C was defined by what was inside here. I am substituting my X now for the value of C. So I can say C is equal to that. If C is going to be F dash of F dash of X is now going to become F dash of C. So I have to substitute C into the original differential. Here, I'm substituting the value of C in my original function my original function. So it's going to be C squared. Then, sir, what if it was X squared plus two, then it becomes C squared plus two, all right? That's what I just need to point out because I, I suspect, I suspect, it's all like my, my, my good little bridge in Germany. I suspect Germany against a third and say 16 thirds. But, but the million, no. Germany couldn't tell me 16 thirds because 16 thirds is five and one thirds. And five and one third don't lie in this region here. Five and one third don't five and one third lies outside of the region. So that means that that's not a guaranteed value of C. All right. So just remember that you have to do something like that. All right. Um, I want you to try that one for me. Let me just walk you through quickly. The first thing, integrate the function. You know what f of x is, or you know what y is. You know your upper and lower limit. It's always going to be over b minus a. You're going to substitute c into the original function. Start. Five minutes.
Somebody say something. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. We soon finish. We soon finish. Um, students, I don't understand. Are you are you complete with the with the with the integration of y equals root of x? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, but I did say to you when you finish, say something to me. What is offered the answer? Upper limit is nine, lower limit is one. It's what is it? Sir, What's the solution? I got 4.163. 4.163? And oh, for that part to talk it. Yeah, I got 52 over 3. So. You got 52 over 3? And when you do the division, you got? 0.163. And is that, is that the same thing as 13 divided by 6? Hmm. Explain your 1.63 for me, please. Because remember, the upper limit is nine, the lower limit is one. Nine minus one is eight. So what I did was also put eight over one. And the reason I put it over one is so that I can, when I invert to multiply, I'm gonna get one over eight. So I'm getting my, I'm, remember, you know, I'm substituting the value of C into my original function. And the original function in this case was Y equals the root of X. So it's going to be equals by equals the root of C. Did I make an error with the calculation? Somebody talk to me, please. Because I'm no, getting sir, I made an error. Oh, okay. But I want to hear the rest of you though. Come talk to me. Talk, 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 talk me through it, guys. I want to hear it. Sir, sir, you can scroll back up to differentiation. Um, yeah, integration. I think I made a mistake. I am, um, I'm, Jermaine, you are, so, you're very pro, pro, yes, 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 for me. Um, when you rearrange your, your, oh, okay, I see the error that I made. I said the error that I mean, I was treating it as if it was a denominator, not a standalone. Oh, okay. Uh, make the correction quickly for me, please. Can I give it two minutes to make the correction, please? Where is Nico? Are you going to think about tonight? Not home, sir. Where is Nico? She's not home. Oh, um, can somebody tell me why can, can, can somebody tell me why Carico is so silent? It's one of two things, you know. Um, is either she not learn it or she drop asleep? Rico, on me for me, please. Dear dad, I was hearing nothing from me the whole night. Abby, you're not talking to me night, tonight. Mr. QC, I need to hear more of you. Sir, question. Yeah. Three, three, half. Why are you, why are you doing it? Three over two. Which two over two for me? Three over this two. The, yeah, the three over two is two times nine to three. Half. Oh, what I did, what, what I did is I just put nine in the calculator and I just raise it to the three halves and I get 27. Okay. Because nine squares. Um, Because nine, nine squares is the same thing as, sorry, not nine squares. Nine is the same thing as three squares. And um, remember the law of indices? Those two, I just want to show you what two, two will cancel out.
So we're going to say two times three raised to the three power. Uh, give me half a second, so actually, let me just type this thing here and, and, and show you what it is. So I will end up with, um, so this is what is going to happen. So my nine is the same thing as three squares. So I'm breaking up my nine into three squares and then the twos will cancel out. So I'm going to be left with three to the third power. Okay, sir. Oh, three, 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 three to the third power is 27 and 27 times. So it explains all of that. All right. So I'm hearing, I'm hearing Jermaine says that, um, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm sensing that he's understanding, but, um, you know, he's very honest tonight, um, saying that why, sir, I made an error. And I'm, and this is what I want of you guys. Talk to me. Even if you're, you're understanding fully, let me know, because I, I want to, I want to be able to differentiate and to help those who are not following what is happening. Now, Jermaine, work with me and the, and the rest of you do the same thing. I want you to press, press nine, Jermaine. Press nine on the calculator, clear the calculator. Clear the calculator to make sure that it is fully cleared. And if it is not, if you're not sure how to fully clear it, just turn it off and then turn it on. Then press nine. Then press your upside on V somewhere in the middle of your calculator. Then you are going to open your parentheses. Open your parentheses. Then you're going to press three divided by two and close your parentheses. And tell me if you get 27. Equal and tell me if you get 27. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. All right. Right. So in situations like these, and especially when you're using like the, cheap, the cheaper versions of the calculator, it does not recognize syntax, right? So you have to be able to, to be on the safe side, which is why I'm saying to you, please, my students, I beg of you, oh, you, need to, you need to get your calculators now so that you know how to manip manipulate your calculator and especially to understand the algorithms that come with it, all right? With the, with the calculations, that is. So when you're doing, so Jermaine, you know, know when you're raising something to a fractional power, you have to include your parentheses. If not, it's going to give you an incorrect answer. Very, very, very important for you. Very, very, very important. Are there any other questions? Um, Just need to practice more, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and as I said before, you remember, you know, this is what I don't understand. Oh, this is um, applications of integration. So you have to make sure that your integration is where it's supposed to be before you can apply any stuff to it. Yes, Rush. So you have to make sure so you know your integration inside out. And then we can do some of these applications. All right, so I'm gonna get that. Let me see if I have another one for you. <laughs> All right, see, I give you an easy one here now. I'm, I'm giving you exactly. Seven minutes. It's not six, I'm gonna come back to you. Start on that one, with that one.
sir, I just send you a WhatsApp. Can you check it, please? Okay, sir. So what are the numbers? Two and ten. The interval. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Two, two comma ten.
I'm, I'm not hearing from you guys. Um, has anyone completed a question? The integral? The integral is 120. Yeah, the integral is 120. The integral is 120, all right. Anybody got 120? Yes, Anybody sir. else got 120? Yes, sir. All right, um, what next? Minus B from, minus A from B. All right, and you're gonna get it. Okay, good, so my integral is also 120. And B minus A is gonna be eight, so it's gonna be 120 divided by eight which is somewhere anywhere between 30 over eight, no, 30. It's exactly 15, sir. Right. Hold on. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but look at this here, Nodo. One twenty divided by eight. Okay. I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw you get that. I saw you get the fifteen. So the, so you have two x. Let me just put that there in case somebody may have gotten it. Um, some other way. You see, I've gotten two c, two c plus three equals fifteen. Yes, so 2c equals 12, c equals, c equals a 6. So you got c equals 6, right? Yes, sir. Everybody? Jermaine, what is it? Sir, I never read so far now. My kind of depend on the right track. Nice. Next, next time. Um, the rest of you are so silent. Okay, can I ask you a little bit more? This is something. Arrow. Um, let me just follow some people. I saw my error, sir. Okay, cool. Alton, you're, you're not allowed to come to my class next week if you're not going to unmute them and, and participate. I'm, I'm, I'm literally calling out students now. Miss Wind, you're not allowed to come to class next week without unmuting to participate. Real talk. There's no way you guys still come to class and just sit down and just go talk to teacher and contribute to the class. All right, so I'm putting, I'm giving you enough notice. Today is how much? Today is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Five days to think about it. You are not allowed to come to class next week without contributing. You can't sit down in a class, no, it no work. So, no real talk. Thank you. I need to hear from you guys. All right. And if needs be, and come next week, you guys don't talk. I'm asking the students to send me their work in WhatsApp to my WhatsApp and I will send them the solution. There's no way you can sit down and not participate. I need to know the errors that you're making so that I can undo those errors. But sir, if you do that, we'll just send the work as well. What do you say? No, tell me what you say a while ago. I'll prepare to talk next Tuesday. Okay, bless your heart. Thank you very much, Miss Wayne. Love it. Mr. Alton Brooks, I'm, I'm waiting to hear from you, you know. Can't come to class and sit down and say nothing. No, man. Mm -mm. All right. Um, noted, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, please. Um, 
Sean is absent from class. All right. Um, <clears throat> there is, all right, what I, I don't want to do tonight. I don't want to do tonight. What I wanted to look at is, um, all right, let me just say something here. I wanted us to, all right, so I have a question here. I had a, I have a question here. Can you identify the value of the value or values of C in the graph above? C is six, but it's difficult for you to see it on this graph because of how the graph is drawn. But I'm saying to you that it's the midpoint. All right, but let me just see something here. Um, all right. Uh, Do, 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 do. What am I looking All right, so I'm saying if you can identify the value of C in the graph, and I'm saying that the interval is 2, 10, we can see that the average of the interval limits um, result in the exact value of C in this particular question. So if you look here, you see that, well, we calculated our C to be equal to 6. But when we look at the average of the, of the, of the, of the intervals, it gave us the exact value of C. Does it work all the time, sir? Um, well, this is a question. 2 plus 10 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. But my interval here is nine plus one, which is 10. The interval is not five. What the interval is? Interval is 4.69. But sir, when you run it off, you can get five. Okay. So it, it doesn't work all the time. We get it to be exact. All right. These are something to, to take note. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. So. I'm giving you just one more question, but before I give the question, I want you to have some, it's like a summary point. It's like a summary point. And one of the things that I tried to do, I think I did it last class, is just to show you, is just to summarize the steps that we take when we're looking at the mean value theorem for integration. Some take home points for the MVT. If it concaves up to the right, well, let me, let me leave this one here until we look at the graph. You see, I have the graphs here, but I, I deliberately not go through the graphs tonight because this graph is slightly off because I'm not seeing the midpoint C there. I, I can see what I'm looking for right here, but my aim is not for the graphs, really for tonight. Well, this graph is clearly shown. My aim is not for the graphs tonight. So let us leave this piece here and let us just do this one as brought up. We're doing this last one here as brought up. Find the value of C that satisfy the mean value theorem for the integral on the, on the limit here, zero, one, for the function f of x is equal to x times one minus x. Now you recognize that so far, this may be the most complicated um, function that we get. So I can't tell you what function I'm going to give you to work with, all right? So you remember your integration now will have to be, matter of fact, let me ask you, what would you do in order to, to fix up that function? X times one. Okay. What would I do with that function yeah. to integrate? Is X function on the term, sir? Very good, very good, very good. All right, go yeah, ahead and expand. I learned something from the other night when Ryan said, you know, some of us are. Hold on to it. Yeah, man. Hold on, eh?
uh, go work on that one for me, please, guys. Um, and then very good, very good, Yanni. I'm just checking the chat. Sir, that is an equal sign in front of the X or a minus. Sir, you're muted if you're talking. Equal. <laughs> F of X is equal to X times one minus X. Okay.
Where we reach, guys? Where we reach? Sorry, I'm stuck. You're stuck? Also, so you have x minus, if you have x minus x squared, when you integrate x, you can get x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3. And then the substitute in yes. That's what you got, Charles? Repeat, sir. You can have x minus x squared. And when you integrate x minus x squared, you can get x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you, and you, so, somebody saying, sir? Them say, yes, sir. Oh, because I don't have I don't ha I don't have the work out. It's just to answer me, huh? Sorry, um, I don't know how to transition it into the C because I would have C minus C squared, but I don't know where to go from there. Right. So you have C oh yeah, 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 yeah. You have C minus C squared. Yeah, you mean the quadratic? No, 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 no. You mean the quadratic C C minus C squared equals what? Equal one over six. Yeah, C minus C squared equal one over six. So you may have to use a quadratic formula for this one now. Um, and the quadratic formula is X equals minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C. I was, oopsie, I was tired. No, using, so use a quadratic, use a quadratic formula. And um, yeah, so copy. Piece. So you use a quadratic formula. Um, so you, may, you may end up with C minus C squared. Very good. C minus C squared equals to, you said one six. So you have C minus C squared equals negative one six. So C minus C squared, C minus C squared. Um, all right, c minus c squared equals negative. No, um, yeah, equals negative positive one six or negative one six. You got positive, positive, positive one six. Oh, come on, what am I, I keep doing this? Copy, yes. So, I'll get something looking like that <clears throat> c minus c squared equals to that. And then transposing gives transposing gives copy. Um, I, I don't want any negative c squared. So transposing is going to give me. Oh, come on, insertion. C squared minus C is equals to um, plus equals zero. So it's no, the minus one six. I'm multiplying through by negative negative one. M U L T I P L uh, multiplying through by negative one. Sir, mm -hmm. if you bring over the C squared and the C, all you get minus six. 
Have I get minus yeah. one C? C, yeah. If you bring over the C and the minus C. If you bring over the oh, yeah. C and the yeah, yeah, yeah. C. Suppose it's positive one C. Suppose it's positive. There's an equal sign right here. Yeah, you're correct. You're correct. So it's going to be, but yeah, actually, if I multiply through by a negative one, I'm going to have, this becomes a negative C, a positive C squared equals a negative one six. And then when I transpose, it becomes positive one six here. So that's correct. Yeah. So um, A is going to be one. Um, cut. Is. A is going to be A is going to be equals to one. Um, what is the value of B? B is equals to negative one. Don't somebody say yes. By the way, anybody remember how to use um, this? And C is equals to one six. No, anybody sir. know? Anybody remember how to use a quadratic formula? Totally forgot, sir. No, Boy. sir. Sir, that's in a subconscious brain. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, it's, I have to use this because it is not, I can't multiply the coefficient of x squared by the constant to get my, my, my real factors. These factors are imaginary, so I have to use a quadratic, um, quadratic equation to solve them. I must use a quadratic equation to solve in this case. So what we look at in the quadratic equation um, is to look at the coefficients um, of my terms. So the coefficient of, of C squares is one, which is my A. So this is gonna be my, the coefficient of C squares is gonna be A, so A is one. The coefficient of C is going to be negative one, which is my B. So my B is negative one and my constant is going to be positive one six, which is what I get my C to be at. And then now all I'm going to be doing is substituting all of these into my quadratic and I should end up with this. All right, so let's just try that and then we'll come to an end. Um, copy, paste, B is negative one. So anywhere in the function, I see these variables, I'm going to put them down. I'm going to make my substitution. So which is one of the easiest formulas to work with. But I'm going to say it again. Do you, can you agree with me that most of what it is that we are working with so far are all formulations? Hold on, you know. Uh, something that you have done on paper is incorrect. No, it is correct. Four over six, okay, it's correct. Um, <clears throat> so all I'm doing is just making a substitution. So minus B, so it's going to be minus and minus one because B is minus one. Plus our minus the square root of B squares, which is minus one squares. B is minus one, so it's minus one squares. Minus four times A times C minus four times A is one. C is one six. All over two times A, which is two times one. So all I'm doing here now is just simply evaluating minus one times minus one is gonna give me positive one. Um, one square, negative one squares is simply one. Four times, that is gonna be just four over six. And two times one is two. Watch me. <clears throat> and then what is one minus four six? That's two thirds. One minus two thirds is going to be one third. What is one minus four over six? Is it one third? Hmm. 
Is Elena not after me? Oh, no, yes, sir. It's going to be one third. And um, that now is copy equal is oh no undo undo uh, let me just if I can so all of this now is going to be equals to two different something let me just carry this over put this under that and I'm going to leave you with this one you go figure go figure so what I'm saying to you you see my answer oh lord uh, okay, forgive me. I'm I'm using I'm using X right here because I have a C up here. I have a C up here, so I don't want to confuse it with the C's. So you can see what my half came out nicely. My one half came out nicely. You are going to work on this one for me, the root of one third divided by by two to see if you get the root of three over six. So Sorry, all of me. this. Go ahead, go ahead, Ra. Sir, I'm get six over six. Mm -hmm. No, six over six won't work. Not, not correct. I'll check it. So I'm, saying to you, I'm saying to you that this answer here is exactly the same as this answer here. We see all the one half came out nicely. But now we want to see all the root of one over three divided by two is going to work out to the root of three over six. That's next class. You're going to do it for me and then we'll discuss it in next class. All right, now do me a favor guys, as a wrap up, um, I'm going to say to you how important it is that you become active learners in this space. Active learners in this space um, for the face-to-face -face delivery. We are trained to read body, body languages. We are trained to read facial expressions. So we can know the ones who are understanding from those who are not understanding. But when you come to class and you don't say, boy, sir, you know, maybe I can error right here. So I won't know that it's you putting in the information wrong in your calculators. And then afford me the opportunity to clear up that misconception because you will hold on to that misconception right through to exams and it will, it's, it's, it's going to hurt you. So please, I want to hear from you, whether or not you understand me. If you understand, sir, clear as mud, I'm understanding, sir. But I don't want, I'm, I'm really not going to go through the whole time with others who are not participating and if, and if you this time say you have a good morning, sir, or good night, sir, and that is it, it's still unacceptable. I want to know that you are learning. All right. Um, so you can see come yes, hon. I was going to ask you how you get the square, the square root three. No man, it, it, that's your homework. You have to get it all from me. This piece here, you have to go. <clears throat> Figure out for me for next class. Yeah. All right. Finally, um, I know I have received two messages from 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 Wint and and Christine, re Erico. Um, Nesta, are you there on Erico? All right. I guess not. All right. So guys, the work is there. I know it's a lot of work. Um, meaning that you have to do in, in, in total, but please don't let the work pile up on you. Start working on your calculus too. Very important. All right. I'm going to see if I can send this off to you tonight so you can have some stuff. I will begin trapezoidal rule. Um, I need to finish off some stuff on this one, but I'm going to start trapezoidal rule. And yes, there is another formulation. See, you see how long that formulation is? There's another formulation for the trapezoidal. All right. And, and matter of fact, the trapezoidal com comes with two one big one and a little one. All right. So we will talk. All the best. Remember to say, Jane for Jesus. We'll talk.
Um, so, nice. you're sending this document in the WhatsApp group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, sir, I sent you a message, you know, direct message. Sorry, oh, you said pardons. You remember Friday what? Remember the recordings. I have been sending the recordings, you know, checking. I think they end up on YouTube. No, yeah, man, you know. I sent some recordings. Yeah, man, no, check, check them and I sent some, I sent some recordings um, the other day. All right. Yes, I'll turn. I see that. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. All the best. Cool, cool.